Hey guys, so um, I wanted to basically go over Limit Cut. Um, got a lot of views on Wormhole uh, using the same sim, and this resource is available. And thought I would, you know, if people need help with this, then it'd be cool to share it. Um, so let's just jump into it. Um, this Limit Cut strat I'm going to be going over is Mario Kart. Uh, if you don't like Mario Kart, you know. I'm sorry, that's just what our static did. Um, if you guys would like to see 1256 strat, I can make another video for it. It's not that much different um, if you understand how limit cut works, which hopefully this video will explain. Um, then you can adapt your strat to 1256. It's really not that hard. The timings are all the same. It's just where you stand and where you go is slightly different. So let's jump into it. Um, first things first, A is our true north. Um, for Mario Kart, you're going to be looking at, uh, you're going to be looking for an explosion that happens from northwest to the east side. So from in this sim, it's from 1 to B. Um, so any explosion happening there is the explosion you're following. Explosions are going to be centered around basically this point uh, along this line between pizza slices. Um, and we're going to be using this heavily as our reference point for this entire mechanic. Um, so let's just take a look at what's happening. Um, let's say that A explodes first. So there's the first explosion at A. That's our de facto number one explosion. Um, remember for limit cut you're going to be counting the explosions uh, to some degree to basically orient yourself for your timings and for where you're going to be standing depending on what number you are. So uh, let's say the first explosion happens in A. All explosions go around um, in a clockwise fashion so you're going to hug A on the left side um, because the ex next explosion is going to be centered here between A and B, meaning the tip of the explosion is going to reach just barely close to this line. So you don't really want to be on the line to avoid clipping. You want to be just left of it, and you'll be safe from the next explosion. So first explosion happens at A. We're all going to run along here. We're going to wait for the second explosion to happen in front of us, move in to there and then so on and so forth with some differences, but let me go over positioning for um, odds and evens numbers. In limit cut, everything happens in pairs. So you have uh, one, two together, two, three, to get, or three, four together, five, six together, and seven and eight together. Basically an odd with an even uh, of the uh, corresponding next value. Um, and how it's gonna work is one or the odd number is going to get cleaved by cruise chaser is going to do a like slice um, in the direction you're facing and then he's going to dash towards the even number um, so the way it is resolved is let's say I'm one um, so I'm just gonna go through the motions let's say the explosion happens centered at a we're gonna move to a um, hugging the left side the second explosion happens okay where the second explosion happens, which is centered around where my character is now, what you want to do is look towards the edge of the arena. If you are one or two, this is your cue to now do the mechanic. So the way you know this is you basically think about, okay, your group is um, the one, two group, regardless if you're one or two. So you're going to be looking for that second person in your group, the odd person's number, regardless if you're odd or even, and that's the explosion that corresponds with your mechanic. So for me, if I'm number one, I'm thinking, okay, two is in my group. So on second explosion, we are going to go to the edge of the arena to do said mechanic. Um, what's going to happen is basically from this point where the explosion is centered, I think about, okay, odd is going to the right and even is going to the left. And what I mean by right or left is there's these little pockets. So here's one pocket, the right pocket, and here's the left pocket. These right and left pockets are your safe spots to not get clipped by the explosions happening in front of you and the explosions happening behind you. Um, so once again, first explosion was here, second explosion is here. We follow it because I'm one, two, I can now get into position because the second explosion happened. If I'm one, I'm going right, and it's gonna be right here is the safe spot. 
You're going to want to face outwards and pop arm's length on your way here or once you get here. And then for two or the even number, you're just going to be going left pocket and waiting to get cleaved by cruise chaser in front of you before you sprint and join the group. You don't have to sprint, but it does make it more comfy. Um, I like saving it for phase two for BJCC, but uh, when you're progging, maybe you want to sprint. Um, that's kind of how it goes. So if we just follow, here's first explosion, here's second, one goes here, two goes here. So second explosion was here, third happens in front of us, we're moving to three, F four happens in front of us, we're moving to four. Now that four happens, because four is the even part of the pair three, four, you look out, here's right pocket for three to stand and look outwards, here's four to stand here, arm's length, do the whole thing. Fourth explosion happens centered around here. The next explosion is tricky. Five happens in the center, and that doesn't mean that the next one skips here. Six will still, the next one will still happen here, but it happens one after, because the fifth one has to go off first in the center. So after the fourth explosion, which happened in front of us, we move into it. You wait here at this line, you wait for fifth explosion to go off, and then you wait for sixth explosion to go off, which happens right in front of you. The rule basically is always wait for the explosion in front of you to go off before moving. Um, so just don't get tricked with the timing here because it's it's you know one extra uh, explosion you have to wait. So sixth explosion happens at C. I move into it because I'm six or are five and six. Um, from this center point, you think about, okay, right of five, you're going to be, or right of C, you're going to be moving here as five, and six is going to be moving here. Something to note is um, here we were waiting uh, for the sixth explosion to happen in front of us. So this happens for all one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. Do not do the path thing I've been showing you where I run to the center thing and then if you're odd you're moving here because there's a chance you'll get clipped if you're standing here. So as you're moving into the sixth explosion you can already move to your spot and you want to move in kind of this um, movement that I'm showing here. So if I'm five, sixth explosion happens there, that's my cue, okay it's time to move in to my position and I move directly into my position. There's no need to move here and then here. You can if you want, just be careful with like if you need to be on the right side of C that you don't get clipped by the explosion that's guaranteed to happen here, which can clip you pretty easily if you're standing right here. So hug C on the left side before moving to your spot if you have to. Um, yeah. And then 7 8, same idea at 8th explosion. Just move right if you're odd, left if you're even. So I'm going to just run through all of them and then you can see for yourself what this looks like. Another thing to note, the sim does it very weird, so there's a good chance I die to the cleave that happens by someone. Um, please ignore that. So one, here's the right pocket, and should be safe from here on out. I'm going to just reset, because there's no reason playing that through. You'll see it through the other ones. This time I'm two. Okay. First explosion's here, second explosion, I can start moving to position, third explosion, arm's length, I'm going to pitch back so I don't get cleaved because remember this strat is doing things a little bit odd, so I'm going to avoid those weird things that are happening. Here's three, so remember I'm going to be looking for the fourth explosion, and we're moving right of it. So one, two, three, four, and we can move right here and we're safe. Here's four. Once again, looking for fourth explosion, but we're going to the left of it. Looking outwards, that was three, four, and then we can just stand right here. I'm gonna stand a little further back because of this simulator being janky. Here's five. Remember, we're looking for the sixth explosion. Five has probably the tightest timing, but it's really not too bad if you just follow these rules. Three, I'll pop sprint for safety. Four, five happens in the middle. We're waiting. Then six goes off, and then we're going to move to our position here. 
and that's five, six, same idea, except we're going to be in the back or the left looking out two, three, four, five, six happens in front of us. Going to go left pocket. Let's see in this case. Okay. Seven. Looking for the eighth explosion in this case. Moving this way. Two. Three. Four. Five happens in the center. We wait. Six. Seven. Eight. I can start moving. Something to note for seven and eight is the uh, where you need to stand is not as strict because you do not have to worry about explosions happening after and before. Um, so you can go on seventh explosion, you can go on eighth, it's up to your group. Just make sure you guys are on the same page. This is explosion six, that's explosion seven, that's explosion eight. I'm gonna move over to the side, get cleaved by my friend. Who, yeah, they're doing it differently in this in this sim, but that will that would work. Um, and obviously, that arm's length timing was did I even pop it? I don't remember. Regardless, that when you get to your position, it's arm's length then, and you're good to go. Um, so that's the sim. I'm going to show from my perspective in our clear video that I have on YouTube as well. Uh, something to note about limit cut is obviously reading your number is priority number one. Um, but you do have a lot of time during the initial movement after the first explosion where your number is still over your head. So don't freak out that you can't see your number. You will most likely see it when you guys are like slightly more spread out. Um, the reason why everyone stacks in the middle for the beginning of limit cut is because you don't want to get clipped by the first explosion. So if you're off to the side, there's a chance that it'll uh, explode on that side. Um, everyone kind of has a little different strat. You're going to have to kind of feel out your own group. Um, what I do is I'm on the edge of this circular part and I wait for my number to show up and then I and then I slide cast in. Usually I'm casting a Helios or an Aspected Helios anyways, um, so I don't want to move too far. So I wait on the side, I see I'm 8, and I move in. Explosion 1, Explosion 2. So explosion 2 just happened, my UI is a bit scuffed to see what's going on, but explosion 2 happens where my cursor is right now. So you'll see that our 1 is lined up um, facing outwards to the right, and our 2 is lined up to the left of where explosion 2 occurred. 3, 4, 5, explosion 4 happened here, so we have 3 here and we have 4 here. This is explosion seven. Six happened back here. Five is here. Six is here. Explosion eight happened here. Uh, seven's here. Eight is here. And the mechanic resolves. You'll notice I did some janky movement uh, where I moved in very, very early into my spot. So I'm already against the wall. Pretty risky, wouldn't recommend. You'll see I almost get cleaved. You see how close that was? Um, if I didn't keep moving forward, then I was basically screwed. Uh, the reason why this happened is if you look back, the person here is not facing at the wall. They're facing at an angle towards the direction that everyone's running. Um, now, people will do micro adjustments when they get here. Um, so this stuff will happen and it should be fine. Just don't do the movement I did because that's pretty risky. Um, but if you want to be safe as a baiter, as uh, an odd baiter, make sure you're facing directly outwards um, to provide as much safety for the people still running. So after that cleave happened, then I would have moved in. Um, like right now, so you'll see uh, this guy, Iona, he's moving in now um, to his position at 7, which is going to be in front of me. That's it.